Hey, how's it going? It's Michael here and welcome to our brand new original series called The Hybrid Theory. For this original series, we'll be going over certain aspects of characters, their abilities, their gadgets, and more, and going through the theories behind them. For this video, we'll be taking a closer look at how Pennywise, the crazy clown and antagonist of the new film It, uses its mysterious powers to transform into various shapes and sizes. Now let's get into some of the theories. In the story and film, Pennywise has the ability to change from clowns to people to giant arachnids to essentially anything it desires at will. Now, although being a genderless creature that is sure to have come from some otherworldly void, let's assume that it is still bound by some features of reality. The ability to shapeshift has yet to really have some deep scientific grounding, but let's mess around and see what we can come up with. Now, a theory is that it can experience some mentally induced high-speed version of evolution and de-evolution as the majority of what it turns into are organic in nature. Well, except for that one time when it turned into a ghost moon. So you essentially have an organism that slides up and down the evolutionary tree that allows it to change shape and size, which unlocks infinite ability since it controls its own evolution. So it can have any hair color, eye color, or anything else. Interestingly enough, there are animals that have abilities to change their physicality, either for defense or offensive maneuvers. The cuttlefish, for example, are able to alter their color and texture of their skin in order to match their background. Pigmentary alterations change the way light bounces off them, and this process is controlled by the neurons in the brain. Similar to what Pennywise would be doing, the mutable rain frog from Sabit's Robber Frog can rapidly change the texture of its skin from rough to smooth at will. These neuron-controlled capabilities would allow Pennywise's change in color and touch of skin, and altering his voice box or mimicking the vocal patterns of the organisms would make sounding human or otherwise easy work. The second theory is that the being Pennywise in its natural state is like a sentient body of atoms. Similar to the Sandman from Spider-Man that has iterations where there is a lead sand crystal, Pennywise may have some form of a lead atom. It guides and directs the body to create new forms with the atoms around it, or the atoms are guided by its true form, the deadlights. A third theory, and probably the least likely, could be that it's just in an illusion technique. Not so much like a magician, but rather a pathogen that travels in the air that induces vivid imagery to anyone that's infected by it. The pathogen has a neurological effect and tricks the brain into seeing something that isn't really there, while the actual hideous, amorphous version of Pennywise attacks and consumes them. But at the end of the day, putting science into the supernatural is rather difficult. But hey, we try the best that we can. But anyway, that wraps it up for this episode of The Hybrid Theory. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, plus any suggestions for future episodes. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe to The Hybrid Network if you haven't already. I'm Michael, signing off for this video. I'll see you next time. Take care.